Let's say you have an unknown protein, a peptide, in your solution and you want to know what it is. You want to know what particular amino acids make up this uh, sequence, primary sequence you have in solution. And so what scientists do is we turn to a technique referred to as Edmund degradation. And the goal of Edmund degradation is to find the primary sequence of amino acids in an unknown protein. And uh, to clarify, we're actually most of the time working with peptides because, as we recall, proteins can get very long, very have many amino acids that compose them, and so commonly we'll break them down via proteases into uh, smaller peptides that we'll actually run Edmund degradation on, and this is to make uh, life a little bit easier and faster for us um, when we're dealing with very large proteins. And so the star of the show here is a molecule referred to as phenyl isocyanate. And phenyl isocyanate has the phenyl group here, followed by a nitrogen double bound to a carbon double bound to a sulfur. And so the first thing that we will do in Edmund degradation is make our solution basic. We're going to raise the pH of the solution in such a way that this uh, terminal amine group here will lose its positive formal charge. This will exist now as an NH2 group with a lone pair of electrons, which is very important. And uh, what will happen is this, under basic conditions, our N-terminal of our unknown uh, peptide will attack the carbon in phenyl isocyanate. And so this carbon will perform as an electrophile be, and uh, be attacked by the lone pair on this uh, amine. And the resulting molecule will look like this. So we have a phenyl group attached here. And this will be step one of our Edmund degradation reaction. And we'll be bound to the same nitrogen that it was before. The carbon, however, is now bonded, still has the same double bond to the sulfur, but is now also bound to the uh, N-terminal amine here, as well as the rest of the amino acid that we had, um, sorry, peptide that we had previously. So we'll have the carbon there, and it will be attached to the same R1 group that identifies that unique amino acid with its proton, as well as the sp2 hybridized uh, carbonyl carbon that exists in our peptides bound to the next uh, nitrogen molecule in our group. And uh, this is also has a positive formal charge, which will be important later. And um, this is bound to another, uh, the next amino acid sequence, R2, uh, and the process continues. And so this symbol here, squiggly lines, is a common thing you'll find in textbooks to denote the rest of the uh, polypeptide, so we don't have to be here for the next 12 hours <laughs> writing this down. And so um, at this point, the next thing that will happen is that we'll recognize that this nitrogen here has a lone pair and it will form a uh, pi bond with this carbon here. And when it does that, the pi electrons in this carbon sulfur bond will attack the sp2 hybridized carbonyl carbon. And this is where carbonyl uh, chemistry uh, from organic chemistry becomes important. We'll recall that because of this um, very electronegative oxygen here, this carbon has a partial positive charge which makes it a good nuclear um, sorry electrophile to be attacked by the pi electrons here and then in addition to that because this nitrogen here had a partial partial positive charge it was withdrawing electrons from this carbon it will now get those electrons here and break off and so what we end up getting from this next reaction that is catalyzed by a molecule referred to as trifluoro 
acetic acid and it has a uh, chemical formula F3C and that will be bound to uh, it looks like this so this allows this reaction to happen and it's very important to pay attention to these things because um, it is very a, a good question to ask is how do we keep this process from just running through all of our amino acids and our polypeptide um, it, it's via precise control over the pH of our solution so I'll, I'll get to that um, later as well and so the the main takeaway from uh, step one of our reaction if we now go on to step two is that we now have a five member ring which is pretty cool so we've got a sulfur bound to a carbon double bounded to that nitrogen that we remember from earlier bounded to another carbon as well as a proton and another carbon carbonyl carbon and this carbon here has our R1 group that we are very interested in finding out, as well as the uh, nitrogen bound to the um, phenyl group. And uh, just so we're clear, the phenyl group is equivalent to a uh, essentially a, a benzene, it's not a benzene ring, but um, it's just an aromatic compound commonly abbreviated like this. We've got conjugated pi bonds inside, um, and hopefully I can draw it clearly enough that people can understand it and uh, in addition to this molecule what we also have is the uh, rest of our uh, amino acid group so we've got the nh3 plus now um, and this is bound to the alpha carbon which has the r2 group the next uh, amino acid in our polypeptide sequence as well as the rest of our uh, polypeptide and so the, the focus here will be on this molecule because um, it contains the uh, first amino acid that was popped off our polypeptide sequence. And so this next step in Edmund degradation is the, the uh, critical part that allows us to control the rate uh, or control precisely the number of amino acids that we take off from our amino acid sequence. We only want that to be one. And so if we take um, the five member ring that I circled and then we drop the pH, we make our solution very acidic. So we, um, we're going to decrease the pH, add H plus present to our solution. What will happen is this ring will turn, uh, change slightly and we obtain uh, the following products. We have the carbon, double bound to oxygen, it will be bound to a uh, carbon that is double bound to a sulfur, as well as a nitrogen and another carbon. And these are both appropriately protonated. And this carbon here has our R1 group of interest. And so getting to this point, the next thing that we would do is uh, perform mass spec if we were doing this as a one-off and mass spec would allow us to identify the R1 group and by um, placing this molecule into a quadrupole for instance uh, these bonds would all be broken and they would be separated into fragments with unique mass to charge ratios that um, are unique to this R1 group because all these amino acids have slightly different chemical structures. And so um, this wraps up how we can perform Edmund degradation in practice. A key uh, instrument you'll see in labs is referred to as a sequinator. Hopefully I pronounced that correctly, but <laughs> um, it essentially automates uh, all of these steps uh, so you don't have to have someone sitting with a pipette for the rest of their life um, pumping solutions around and uh, yeah so this is uh, the introduction the organic chemistry to the organic chemistry behind Edmund degradation I hope you guys found this useful let me know if you have any questions and thanks for watching